bad news is that I missed the morning session, the bad news for me. And I'm terribly disappointed for that. And uh, the reason is that uh, I got a version of the part of cold, and I had a terribly congested sinuses uh, overnight, loosely, etc., etc. So that's the bad news for me. Uh, the bad news for you is that Antonio very kindly gave me his medication and he said it works great but there is one side effect, you may fall asleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here we are and uh, this is my title and I think it uh, fits very, very nicely to what we've been talking about so far. Our city is too complex uh, for complexity. Uh, some thoughts of CA models uh, in the 21st century. <coughs> right. So here is uh, the things parts I'm going to talk about. There is an introduction, of course. Uh, then uh, just a, a three points, three problems I'd like to talk about that uh, other people have uh, identified along with myself. Uh, and then this notion of that system science, which of course includes complex system science, it's not the universe, bigger and smaller versions, as uh, what uh, may be called meta science, and what that implies. Uh, the issue of uh, how you specify complex system system representations, uh, the magic word adapting uh, to future ignorance, and then some are uh, concluding thoughts. And this is all very open ended, it's speculative, it's sensitive, so I don't have any completely finished wonderful work to, to show you this afternoon. Uh, so, just to set up the context a little bit, uh, as we all know, things have changed a lot since the 1980s when uh, the first CA models started appearing in the geographic and related literature. So, as you know, we have entered the big data age, which is also big machine, big computer age. Uh, information technology is ubiquitous, and, and we also have an increasingly digitally engaged citizen society, especially, for, uh, especially in the industrialized world, but uh, uh, the rest of the world is catching up in the past. So, um, CA models also are entering that new age, and uh, this could be a good time uh, to, um, to think about them again. Uh, now, what else is new? Uh, we've heard uh, on a couple of occasions these past couple of days that there is a crisis of theory in the domain of general domain geography and <laughs> And um, as people were talking about geographical spatial theories, it occurred to me, and this is a thought that I uh, just had, so it's not uh, supported by data and evidence, but it's, it, it occurred to me that the uh, spatial theories that we have for geography, like and Cristalla, and Alonso, uh, and they were really uh, theories of industrial age in many respects. And we don't yet have the theories of the information age uh, are, are, are still being formulated, but they're not there. Uh, we have a crisis of planning. We went from uh, comprehensive planning to all the other forms that Mike uh, talked about on the first day. And uh, what we end up with, with is something that is an idea of something that is fragmented, that is piecemeal, that is very often bottom up, place making, people making one little square at a time. Uh, and uh, and since, since uh, for many of us modelers, uh, eventual application in planning policy making is a, a distant goal, uh, we need to take that into account as well. And there is also a crisis of modeling uh, in the sense that um, People are talking more and more about data mining as opposed to process modeling or about uh, other things like that. Uh, I believe that many of you, most of you probably are uh, familiar with this European Futurist, I don't know how, ICT project, which is, you know, modeling the entire universe, the entire world, and uh, you have 
platforms, a expert who provide data and you have sensors uh, enveloping the earth and you have all that. And the idea behind it all, you know, the uh, complex theories are there. Uh, but the idea is really is that, you know, put, put all the data you can get in the folder and just for data mining, uh, uh, pull out stuff that you give to policy makers. Uh, okay. So, this is the right time of uh, Kaboots to celebrate the achievements and we certainly have heard about those in uh, the excellent work that was presented yesterday and the day before, uh, to change and to face the challenges. And one of the challenges that uh, most of us have been aware of for some time is that somehow CA has been replaced and or replaced by a English model. Uh, by people who think this is it and this is not the truth. And uh, so there are challenges like that from other techniques that I also mentioned uh, data mining a moment ago. And of course, it, does, it doesn't have to be uh, a conflict really, uh, since data mining can be used for calibration. But anyway. <coughs> and, uh, and this is the point, the third one is the point I'll uh, focus in uh, more carefully today is to consider some of the and um, I was fortunate enough to come across a very recent paper by the Bar of Gali, you know, an old name in uh, Italian automata and all kinds of other things. And, uh, and it was so much, you know, an expression of so much I had been thinking about that I decided to follow these three points. So it's the right time for them to think about it. So these are the three points. Uh, first of all, that cities are made by real, fully complex people and not the little robots that say in the models of the uh, Cities are artifacts. They are very complex artifacts and, and they are not natural systems with their robots. And the models that are derived from uh, physical science uh, have trouble with that point because it's probably know uh, Herbert Simon's work on the sciences of the artificial. Uh, an artifact is an artifact is a completely different kind of animal. You know, even as something as simple as a tin can cannot be explained by any laws of physics. And then uh, the, the third point, uh, which is surprising in a sense, and it's uh, not and not people have talked about it, is that uh, if cities are complex systems, how can the future be predicted? Uh, since our predictability is actually a hallmark of complex systems. So there's a little interesting philosophical <coughs> issue here. So let's uh, take these issues one at a time. Uh, the first uh, goes back to a very old debate uh, that uh, back to the times of the quantitative revolution in the social sciences. And it is uh, the question as to whether physical and human social systems can be modeled by the same approaches. And this is a very uh, simplistic, in a sense, way of summarizing that. Okay? So you can, you can see human and physical <coughs> systems as being uh, of the same basic substance as physical systems. And, uh, and, uh, and then the question is, uh, I would say that's different, and then the question is, uh, then what about the approach? Uh, can you use the same approach, uh, or do you need a different approach for social systems? So what I put here in the box, uh, if you think that uh, uh, humans really can be reduced to electrochemical <coughs> impulses in the brain, and therefore it's all social biological, Systems, then you're a reductionist. Uh, that's the easiest place to be in a sense, so not very satisfying for most of us. Or you can say, yeah, humans are really different from uh, rocks and uh, rivers, but you can still use the same approach to a large extent. So then you're a positivist. And I think most of us uh, doing the kind of modeling we do, whether it's CA or related, uh, we fall in that box. Um, and then you have those who say, uh, uh, actually, the, um, the substance may be the same, uh, you know, um, cities are made of concrete and steel, 
so they are made of natural materials, but of course because they are artifacts, uh, they are designed, so they belong to the design sciences that are not the same as the physical sciences. So we really should, and, and we accept that, I mean, I accept that, that design is not the same as you know, analysis and synthesis and positive and normative and all that stuff. So even the substance may be the same, Then you're a humanist, you don't want anything to have to do with the quantifiers. Uh, they don't get it, they're just scratching the, sub the, the surface of phenomena. Uh, but um, when we look at their work on occasion, we say, yeah, this is interesting, I wish we could, do, we could deal with what it's saying about us. And Portugal says that in the paper, that we do have things to learn from the humanists. The problem is we can't squeeze it. system 
And uh, so this is the specification. So what you include in there, what you throw in, uh, the time dates, so uh, some kind of time scale and, and time interval and time period you want. Uh, there is a set of input values. Um, then, uh, then what you can observe as outputs, uh, the states, uh, the output value set, which is all the possible things that you think can complete, and then the transition function and the output. And indeed, the cellular automaton model, and that comes from my first cellular automaton paper back in 85. Most of you were even born yet. Um, so it, it can very easily be uh, described in that language. And let's not worry about the notation. But what I want to get at is this kind of um, hierarchy that Zadia sets up, where you start at level zero with what you call an input so that you have a black box, you throw something in, something comes out, uh, but that's all you know. It's a simple thing you can do with data and get uh, output out of the system. Um, then it goes more and more complex, um, and, uh, and, and then you get uh, down at level 5 to something that actually, uh, if you translate all the notation, something that, that implies function. variables. 
here. Uh, and then they go down uh, decision making indirectly as a variable. So you are, the, the decision making is not explicitly represented in the system, but you know it's there. So it's a bit more complex uh, than uh, for the bit of the
a very, very good quantitative economic geographer uh, who's still around, I understand, but uh, turned himself about the things that he discussed and turned to winemaking uh, when some of us started doing several atomic matter and such instead of equations. Because he thought this was play, it was not science. So he discussed it, he walked away. But before doing that, um, he uh, published a little essay in uh, Geographical Analysis of All Places, where he was saying, uh, imagine a, uh, an artist's studio, and you have a statue in the middle, and then you have students uh, drawing, students uh, sitting around the statue and drawing it. And some will draw the front, and some the back, and some will draw the head, and some will draw the hand and the foot, and some are good artists, and some aren't, and some will use watercolor, and some will use oil, and, and some are representative artists, and some are abstract. So in the end, when you go around and look at what the, uh, the students did, uh, each one of these works will look different, but it is the representation of the same style. You know, this notion that there is a reality there and we're just uh, doing the culture of the pattern of representation. Let's see what happens. Um, this is something I argued recently that uh, it's complex systems science is really a meta science, which means uh, it's not just a, a representation, a way of getting representation, but it is a theory of how It's a theory of so, uh, one, um, one definition we have of that is that uh, meta science is uh, the set of uh, systematic cognitive structures to which scientists order the knowledge of the world. So, it's an order in the framework. And, um, and, and here are some things that I think would qualify mathematics in general, and especially in the areas of mathematics, more things, and special theory. That, uh, explicitly designed to do that uh, as theory of representation. Um, computer science, machines and automata theory, knowledge representation, uh, systems and complex theory, but also let's not forget that philosophy and epistemology are very much into this question of uh, how it can be represented. So it qualifies as metasense. Uh, just a tangible example, because I couldn't think of anything closer to what we're doing. Uh, the thing about a representation, unless an ordinary model is um, a representation in a meta science, is that it is constructed for a particular, particular way for a purpose. For example, if you, if you want to, there is weather and you can make a weather map of it. But what kind of weather map you're going to make depends very much whether you need it for scientific study whether you went it uh, you need for a school test illustration or whether you need it for a TV web well right? Uh, so these are representations of the same kind of phenomena. And it's not just that you're looking at the stats of a different animal. You have a different purpose in doing so. So what we have here emerging is this notion of the philosophical notion of intentionality of the user of the model. So what was the model trying to do with this thing? And, and the meta theories of representation can give you guidance as to how to construct each representation, each model, for whatever purpose you want to use it for. So a representation of model is constructed, specifically each model is constructed in response to some user need. And I think that this is an important point in this uh, new age of which if you wish, that, uh, that uh, rather than, uh, that emphasizes uh, individual, you know, individual needs, uh, user purposes. Uh, yeah, your model is very nice, but it's, it's not what I mean. You know, and, and, and things being created, artifacts, models are artifacts. They're not just what nature gives us. Uh, 
So for the first um, three years maybe, I've been moving deeper and deeper into geographical information science, and in particular the um, the area of ontologies. Uh, for, for many people, ontologies are a strange kind of term to be used in this context. Uh, so those of you familiar with um, computer science, so that's where this uh, the term came in, in, in you know, ontology small o. Uh, it came from computer science. And uh, there is really not uh, that much of a disconnect between the uh, philosophical notion of ontology, uh, which is you know, what the world contains and how it works. Uh, and the computer science notion of ontology, uh, which is, okay, I design a model, that's a, that's a little world, that's a little miniature world. What's inside that little world? What are its elements? What are its components? How it works? So we're talking here of ontology, not, not about the universe and all that, but the models, the kind of models we have. And uh, so I started out with the basic version, and the foundations were just information. Okay, this is the information aid, so it's a good time to have that. Uh, a space time framework that is not specified ahead of time, whether it's Euclidean, whether it's continuous or discrete, and the purpose. And, uh, and there are some key ingredients. It's a construction uh, sort of thing. There are space time granules. It's discrete. Why? Because information can only be acquired from discrete sites. You know, yes. So it is discrete. Uh, space time granules. There are classes of properties that uh, may be of interest to any particular model situation. And, and there is what I call the geographic constructs, which are these uh, things that we find at each different level for each different purpose, for each different use, in a sense. And so uh, what you end up with is a, uh, a structure that um, has a presentation of levels. You start with the uh, uh, space-time framework and information. 
associates with different representations of different phenomena. Thank you. 
just it's forget it, you can't predict the future. Now what you can do is keep your options open for a good future. Um, what else? Uh, we should try to integrate human intentionality in our world. Uh, we should be able to distinguish between artifacts that are created for a purpose uh, from natural processes that, uh, that follow laws, uh, that result from laws. <coughs> we should the fact of uh, being able to predict and, uh, and, and value adaptability and flexibility, which has I heard a lot of you already mentioned that. Uh, just to, to, uh, to, to close this idea, here is the, uh, the traditional notion that here you have the, uh, the big theory that this talks about, the global theory of the world. You know, it's, uh, Papa George's statue, it's the reality that's up there. And, and of course, you can have uh, different visions, oh, sorry. Uh, you, you can have different uh, ways of cutting it up and, uh, and, and uh, maybe fundamentally different models. Uh, but basically, it holds, but it's all part of that one reality. And, and what I found much more attractive is this instead of the divide and conquer sort of view. I'm afraid you can't see this, but there are some very fine lines there among the boxes. Uh, accept uh, or see models as local theory rather than a total theory, say, of the European system. See it as a local theory, so there are going to be a lot of these little um, throwaway, task specific micro models. And, uh, and, and, and in a system like this, if you have two micro models that uh, are close, uh, then they have quite a bit of overlap. Um, uh, but then the further away you go, uh, the more difference there will be. And, and there is no uh, absolute compatibility, uh, you know, because the diff sufficiently distant views will come out with sufficiently different models. And there is no uh, point to this uh, match. Okay. And, and it's, it's, so it's a much more flexible approach in a sense, much less ambitious. Uh, although the general nature of things is, is, is kind of interesting. So I don't have uh, Roger's talent, growing talent, uh, but I'm from California.
I like about the Zygler framework that I was talking, uh, that I showed you earlier, is that it goes all the way up to the machine because it has, it is in the language of, of, of machine, machine in the top, you know, there are four or five levels of that size when you push down the top Now, what you said that you'd like to understand, I, I'm not saying that everything you do should be the whole enchilada. For, for some purposes, it's, in fact, that's what I was arguing in the end, that some people might be curious. You know, for many purposes, it's something a lot simpler than what you showed us uh, would be good enough. Um, but not for all purposes, and, and certainly, and possibly not if you, if you want to uh, decidedly policy make it to get something into which I made a initial future.
Yeah, there is, there is work in that area, and, and I'm very happy to see that because I, I, really, uh, I was, uh, you know, this, many of you know the sleuth model that my colleague, uh, it's one of the most popular models uh, in the world. And uh, partly because it's very easy to use, its uh, data needs are limited. Uh, it makes intuitive sense, you know, its rules, uh, the, the structure is uh, explicit, very easy to understand, you avoid slopes, uh, you are attracted by transportation networks, you know, it's, it's things we... And, um, and so I saw it uh, as a wonderful little tool for experimenting and understanding things, getting inside. Uh, I did not agree with uh, Keats' desire to present it as a policy-making tool. Uh, and he was, you know, he had no problem rather turning the crank and making predictions for 30, 50 years. Not with that one. And, and it's not that, you know, he's, he's one of the people I respect the most, it's not that uh, this is built in the notion of modeling unfortunately, that once it fits the data today and for yesterday and the day before, then you can, then you've got, you know, you've got the machinery 